Now it's time to get the ZRDR CO2 generator functioning now. So it needs a couple ingredients. It needs baking soda and citric acid and water to make a reaction. So I have my scale set up here. I have a measuring container. So we're going to tear out the scale and we're going to measure out uh, 200 grams of baking soda. So I have my tub of baking soda and we're going to measure out 200 grams. We're at a buck eight, 126, 142, 164, 182, 188, 192, 198, 200 grams. We have 200 grams of baking soda. Put this off to the side. And then we'll take our uh, handy dandy collapsible funnel, stick it in the top, and put the baking soda in. Okay, the baking soda is in the vessel. And now it's time to measure out the citric acid. So that we'll fire up the scale again, place the cup, we'll tear the scale. And now normally 200 grams of baking soda and 200 grams of citric acid will make the system work very nicely, but we want to pimp it out. So we want to get the maximum amount of uh, CO2 out of the ingredients that we are putting in. So uh, based on my research, I will be adding, instead of 200 grams of citric acid, I will be adding 262 grams of citric acid to 200 grams of baking soda, that will give me the maximum amount of reaction with said ingredients. So we'll measure 262. Hundred and twenty, hundred thirty-eight, hundred and fifty-two, one seventy, one eighty-six, two hundred four, two twenty, two thirty-six, two fifty-two, two sixty-eight.
So we need to take some out. 260. Still too much. 262. Okay. We'll place that into the vessel. Okay, that is that. Now the next ingredient to add is the water. So we'll move the citric acid out of the way. And this cup has uh, a measurement for milliliters. So we're going to be measuring out 300 milliliters of water. And if you don't have a cup with milliliters on it, you can also, also measure out 300 grams because a milliliter of liquid, preferably water, is a gram. So 300 milliliters of water. And before we install or place the water onto the vessel, I want to lubricate the threads and the o-ring of the regulator with a little bit of light oil. Because getting a proper seal is very important. You don't want any leakage. And lubricate the threads to keep them from making noise or galling. So that's prepped. And now what you want to do when you install the water is you want to tip the vessel at an angle because you don't want the volcano to erupt if you just dump it in. So we're going to add the water and it's going to run down the sides of the vessel. and it's bubbling and sizzling in there. And we'll put the top on. You can hear the pressure already building. Screw the top on nice and tight. You don't have to go crazy. Just enough to for it to seal. And that's it. And now the pressure will build this will start getting cold down here and start making condensate. So that's why it has a, a, a plastic base. And we'll start building pressure. And we're already starting to build pressure. It went from zero and now we're just up into the black of the uh, you know low pressure warning there. So it takes about an hour, maybe a little longer for it to build pressure up to the 20 or so kilograms slash cm squared so whatever that is in psi who the hell knows and then uh that's that just wait for it to build it takes about you know an hour or so and then uh all you got to do is uh plumb up your airline and put your diffuser into the aquarium and then uh ideally set up your bubble counter so uh you'll uh, have your solenoid on, and then you set your bubbles with this uh, regulator here. And ideally, you want to have about one bubble per second, but uh, that's all to be determined depending on your setup. So uh, while that is uh, building pressure, and when you install it in your aquarium, you want to have uh, a CO2 monitor. So uh, we'll set this up in the uh, next video. So that's that for this video.
keep your pressure steady. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.